your mm. favorite bands? Uh, I mean, for for a long time and during a lot of you know formative years, le- like before and during my early years playing Green Day for sure. Okay. And Mike Durant, like, you know, they're a three piece band, and you know, uh, yeah, obviously they double up guitars and stuff on records, but you know, I've seen them, I've seen him play as a three piece, and you know, he really fills in that space, yeah. you know, but without overdoing it, you know, taking the focus Not, away yeah, yeah. from, you know, what's now, happening you, in the song. Were you listening for bass back then? Like, when? what year are you talking that you started moving to bass? So, this would be probably like 98, 99 there, my last two years of high school thereabouts, okay. I think, you know. Uh, so you were drawn to bass? 2000, and... like, yeah, well, like I said, I, you know, I wanted to play music, my friends you know uh, a few of my closest friends like had a band you know and i really wanted to play too you know it was like you know i that's in, in response to like that favorite band question too like for me it's like my favorite band is almost always is like my friend's band in high school because that's the band that i was like i want to do that yeah and they're doing it so that means i can i can do it you know yeah, it's accessible to me yeah exactly um and then just started playing uh you know guitar with somebody and was like, wow, you know, we should, somebody should play bass. I'm like, well, I'll, I'll do it. I'll give yeah. it a whack. I'm not that good at guitar, so I might as well try, try this other instrument, mm-hmm. you know, and just stuck with it. And, you know, was always able to find a spot. I think that's, you know, bass and at least in this area, like, you know, bass and then drummer is always the hardest person to yes. find when you're trying to put together a band. If not impossible. Right. Yeah. Because again, I mean, like, any good drummer is already coveted by five other bands. Yep, for sure. The drummer in our band is in probably five. I don't mean that might be an exaggeration, but he's in at least two other bands, like pretty regularly. Yeah. yeah. So Green Day, what else? Uh, your friend's band, but. Yeah, yeah. Um, so like as a kid, like uh, Beach Boys, big time. Like uh, Beatles too, but more so Beach Boys. Like. Uh, I think my I think my the only records my dad had were Beach Boys records, and then he had like some of his brother's Beatles records and stuff. And like I remember as a kid putting those on, you know, da- you know, playing, you know, dancing around with a broom or whatever, yeah. you know, and, and pretending to play instruments and stuff. So, yeah, Beach Boys, big time, um, you know. And then yeah, after high school and like uh, late high school, like I just started getting into punk rock and just listening to a lot of punk bands and stuff. So, yeah. but uh, those are really the main ones. Joe. I mean, Smashing Pumpkins. Yeah. Oh, like, yeah, well, I knew sure. that one now. Like, yeah. That's pretty much, like, my whole childhood. It was, like, that was the only band I cared about. How'd you get into them in childhood, though? Uh, I was probably, like, 13, Okay. I would say, 13. When I first, like, I so, like, I, you know, I had always hung out with, like, people kind of, like, a couple years older than me. You know, so, like, one of my friends had a car, and we were, like, driving around. He, I heard Cherub Rock for the first time and I was like this band's cool but I wasn't like in love with that band then that was like a band I saw sounded cool yeah and then like I had another friend he was like super into Nirvana and The Doors and I never really like like I guess at that point I really cared about music enough to like have a favorite band mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and then until like I saw a Bullet Butterfly Wings video when and they're just hooked when, yeah and that was like that's my band I was like that that, yeah. that dude in that Zero shirt yeah that's and I was like, I remember like taping it and like showing it to my mom and she was to see if it was like, okay to listen to. Like I never really had like rules like that, but like, I felt like at that point she was kind of like laying down the law a little bit more, but yeah. she was like, yeah, you, I guess you could like that man. He looks mm-hmm. evil. Yeah. But yeah. He did. He looks scary. Yeah. But I mean, she he was the, like, she was cool with that. skull to look scary. Right. Yeah. Like I remember if my first concert when I saw him in like 96, um, I've seen him 19 times. Like, that's my oh. favorite band. Pumpkins. <clears throat> Sandwich Pumpkins. And then, like, kids, like, in school, like, make fun of me about, like, in that band. Like, I've always gotten shit. Why, but, though? I don't know. You know. People, like, like to hate on them or make fun. Maybe hate on me because I like them, you know. But, but, but okay, point. like, like I can get some bands. Like, okay, I liked U2, and I liked U2 a little bit too long. Hmm. But they had some, like, Joshua Tree's a phenomenal fucking hmm. record. If you, Bono just became a douche. Hmm. Or always was and was, had, sure. had the, um... Uh, the ability to continue his douchiness. Yeah. But, like, they still wrote great fucking songs. Mm-hmm. And you look at the yeah, Pumpkins. Brian Eno wrote great songs. Well, I think he, <laughs> Yeah. Did you see on uh, All That You Can't Leave Behind, he's like, I will continue to work with you if I get writing credit. Yeah, it is. Well, he should. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
yeah, Pumpkins got they they have so many songs too, which I yeah. like. You know, as a band, like they they release so many like unreleased stuff. Um, I don't know. Just this is my favorite band. I love their songwriting. Um, I love their guitar tone. They have a great drummer. Yeah. I think you know. they are, they're like a fan's band, though, you know what I mean? In that sense, like you're saying, like they did, they've always done a lot of like, you know, B-sides and extra tracks and rare yeah. releases yeah. and things like they give you a lot. Yeah, they have live know. recordings. like They give like, a shit versus some yeah. of these guys, which are just kind of cashing. And it, every right? album sounds different, yeah. which I love. Like, it's like they're always evolving as a band, yeah. you know. Um, lately, I don't agree with all of it. Why? Um, I'm just not a fan of some of their newer stuff. Like I, just, I haven't listened to their new, new one. I saw. I didn't even know. I stopped following. I feel like I forgot about them until you just mentioned them. Yeah, I just I don't know. I feel like I don't know if I lost touch with the band somehow or like they're just not writing stuff that I agree with or whatever. But I don't know. Just like I mean, I'll like, and it's weird because like every now and then I'll I'll hear an album and I'm like I'm not a fan of this album, and but then two years later I'll be like. Some good See, songs okay, on, um, some good songs on this song. I get made fun of for Kings of Leon every once in a while. Yeah, don't agree with that. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I, yeah, I'm, I'm actually shocked uh, you yes, like that. That's man. correct. Oh, really? Yeah. Wait, so funny. You probably know the same people. Uh, ben Earnhardt. Yeah, I know that guy. Do you really? Yeah. Okay. Uh, anyway, one night he he was doing open mic night in Ada, and um, I was like, "Oh, play Kings of Leon." So he's, "Oh, I love Kings of Leon. I got a Kings of Leon tattoo." He is not the guy that I think. Does would, he have one? Yeah. Okay. He's not the guy that I think would love Kings of Leon. Yeah. And I'm kind of the no, like their early stuff was okay. really bluesy rock. Hmm. I guess I just know that one song. Which one? Sex on Fire. Yeah, um, that's, I think it's one of those bands that their band album that, is better. It's covered than a their, lot too. Their like, single. Wait, so their albums are better than their singles. Yeah, no, I mean, yeah, but who is this? Yeah, you're right. Tom Petty's albums are better than his singles. Everyone knows the singles, and then yeah. he's got the most. But that's his burnout, I think. Half of that. I agree Don't with you? that. I think Pumpkin's got better songs got than their singles. 19 albums. I know. Singles are and weird. Great They're picked by, like, yeah, exactly. Yeah, but you no, can't, Petty there's no 19. way to fairly judge it because you're not going to hear, you know, Did deep you? cut B-side on the radio 10 times a day. You're not. But, right. Yeah. So, you just, like yeah. you're saying, yeah. like, burnout or whatever. Like, there's oh, no way sure. to fairly judge, you yeah. know. You'd have to somehow have heard the yeah. record in its entirety before any of the songs we'll do a singles. listening experiment we'll yeah. make, you know force you to listen to b-sides 10 times yeah. um, i have so many pumpkin b-sides i could recommend I, you know sometimes like you just don't have what you did before and it's like that's how i feel about yeah. music that's why i've bombed before like man i tried to go up there i'm like oh i'm gonna play my song i'm gonna, I'm gonna play my old song time. and i'm like ah this fucking song i hate this song <laughs> like i'm singing it and i'm like god i hate this song I think part of the problem is for bands, you know, like Smashing Pumpkins or even like yeah, Green Day, like, like I said, they were my favorite band for a chunk of years. I can't listen to them. Like, whatever last, I don't know, six albums they've made, yeah. I can't possibly even begin to listen to. But I think part of the problem is because for them, like, that's their job. Their job is to write songs and put out albums and do that. Yep. And any, I mean, anybody has had a job, even if you have a job that you love, eventually you're like, man, I'm just here just punching in, getting my check, going through the motions. Yeah. And that's their job. They have to do it. They're not like, oh, I'm so compelled by these feelings or emotions uh, this song really that speaks I got it right. Like, Which it probably does happen that way. I'm but sure it still happens. Maybe one and, out of ten you know, versus oh, ten. Right. I think it's yeah. hard to write a song when you're a millionaire. And that too. For sure. For that sure. Too. You should be poor and, you know working too goddamn hard like work a, a, a manual labor job There's some truth to that's that. yeah. some fucking yeah. good songwriting right but yeah like for, as far as like other bands i like it took a while for me to even like let another band like let get in a, get i was that way with the beatles to the point where kids at in my high school made fun of me because yeah. i'm listening to a band from the 60s sure. and they're all like this is weird as shit i don't understand this i yeah. was listening to sergeant peppers by the yeah. way yeah okay there's like a ton of like early 2000 like rock bands that i like that are not not probably pretty good but, oh we need to hear a couple of them um uh, this band called flaw don't know i like them a lot um seether seether I, no. I like them a lot for a minute this is a band called social burn that i really liked for a while um our lady peace our lady peace i'm a huge our lady there peace was fan. one album that was fucking huge for me. yeah i don't remember which one it was but. uh i kind of stopped liking them once their like original guitar player left it was like the album was like spiritual machines it was like his last one after that yeah, it was uh, bad, but like I like the Decemberist a lot. Okay. That's a uh, like singer songwriter, uh, a band called Lost Dog Street Band. They're amazing, um, kind of like Americana. Okay, kinda. I like Americana a lot. Yeah, Tom Petty um, as well. Mm-hmm. Sure. 
But yeah, like I think lately I've been really into like songwriters, you know, and and then like there's a lot of pop punk bands or like punk bands that I kind of like now. Like Adam, obviously being you know his friend for the last like you know few years or whatever, he's definitely like I think when you have friends like they influence you for to sure. like new things. Mm-hmm. So you have know? you gone with Smashing Pumpkins and like them or did you? I already did. No, okay. we actually found out that we were both at a, a same Smashing Pumpkins yes. concert in uh, 2000. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the uh, auditorium, uh, Hill Auditorium at U of M. We actually were both at the same show years before we knew each other. Yeah, that's so pretty no, cool. I, I already yeah. liked him. I'm not to the level that he does. Yeah. No. Well, I actually have that show on bootleg. That's fucking awesome. Yeah. But I feel like, like I, were you obsessive about Green Day? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, I would say so. Yeah. yeah. Like I knew, you know, you know, facts about all the individuals. To the point where everyone else is like, and, come on. You know. He's got Green Day action figures. I do. Well, who Green doesn't, though? <laughs> yeah, sure. Right. I just saw those online recently. Oh, yeah. I nice. can't tell again if you're joking. Brian Corgan. Was it Corgan? Billy. Billy oh, Corgan. Billy. Billy. There's Billy Corgan. There's a Billy Corgan, Billy. Corgan. Billy. action figure. Where? Do you Billy have the Joe Billy? Armstrong. Yeah, thank you. It's Billy Joe Armstrong. <laughs> Billy Corgan is um. Smashing pumpkins. I haven't seen any pumpkin action figures yet, but I do have a custom action figure that I had a toy guy make for me. You need to send me a picture. I'm going to put it right here. You know where your name comes from? (laughs) That comedian used to smash uh, watermelons on stage. He smashed a pumpkin one time. And they go, smashing pumpkins. Is that where it came from? I have no idea. I I thought it came from um, uh, Charlie Brown. No. The Great Pumpkin. Yeah. But I don't know either. So... I think I told you a little bit of this when we met. My first band that I was in in high school, I actually had to become the bass player because I was the worst. It was my band. I formed it. I made t-shirts. My parents owned a t-shirt printing press. I had t-shirts. I had branding. I sold like $300 of t-shirts before the band ever played. Nice. They said, you're playing the bass. <laughs> and it was not a, I want to play bass. It was, you're, right. you're really bad at guitar. Yeah. This was yesterday. Use this one. Man, that I that, that's crazy because I feel like bass is so hard to play. Like, I'll I play it well. I was just that to bad. To play it well, right? This thing yeah. is, I tell people all the time, it's really easy to play. Yeah. Like, it's, I think it's a great instrument to start on because it's, it is like, it's pretty straightforward and simple. But to and play then, it well and to right. get a groove and sure. all those things. Yeah. I watched this guy play bass on a video the other day and it was so good. Like, I was like, I'm never going to try to play that instrument because I can't <laughs> play like that. He was killing it. Then there's no point in doing anything. I guess. By that logic. There really isn't. No Fair. Do anything, which I think is which is also point. True. I'm only going to use yeah. that logic for bass. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I didn't learn a cover until I was like 25. What motivated you to learn a cover? Um... Because I like, I realized I liked certain musicians, and I should, I should play the songs that I like to people. Well, I think it's a great way to learn to, from them, though. Like, if I liked mm-hmm. the Beatles, to learn their chord progressions, to learn their melodies, is a great way to put that in my brain. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I already learned. I had already, you know, been exposed to music so long that, you know, it just it was like, oh, it's pretty much the same thing. It was like you give a painter paint, and you know, they're like, oh, great, I got the thing that they used to. Just like anything, you got the tool that they have. For some reason, I never felt like... Although, I remember stupid fucking, at the time, City in Color and Telescreen was like, oh, yeah, that guy's voice is so silky. And, you know, I'm sorry, that almost sound like Tom Waits right there. <laughs> but, <clears throat> or uh, even somebody even less or well known uh, oh, who's got a raspy voice. Um, Leonard Cohen. He's got a new documentary that just came out. I've not seen Sony that. Sony Picture yet. Classics. Yeah. You know who that. made Leonard Cohen more popular than anyone else? Jeff Buckley. Mike Myers. But it was Jeff Buckley's version of. Uh, yeah, but uh, it, yeah, 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 but it was in Shrek that Shrek. really got it big. So, oh, okay. I was thinking of like the movie Halloween. Is that Mike in there? Oh, right. <laughs> 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 I was like, I don't remember that song in there. <laughs> <laughs> no, I well, like that's Michael was, Myers. Michael Myers. They don't call him Mike. They do. Oh, his, his friends do. His friends call him Mike? Yeah. What's up, Mike? It's close friends. Like yeah. Freddy Krueger and... Fred. <laughs> That's Fred. What yeah. about metal? Did you like metal bands? Yeah, um... Cradle of Filth. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Would Typo Negative be considered metal? I think so, but not like in the, like when I, when I think metal, I don't you know. But where else would you put them, right? Type of negative. Awesome. I don't remember. I don't think I, I actually I know listen of them. to them. I, I know. They oh, come ba- here. great bass player. All if right. you if you want to listen to some great bass, Typo Negative. Okay. That guy. What album? All of them. October Rust is a good. I album. think we all have listening assignments. Yours is Early Kings of Leon. Okay. Mine is Typo Negative. Uh, what's it? You got to choose one for him to listen to. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. You mean yes? The band yes? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> care no. for prog rock. 
Well, uh, <laughs> uh, what? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, Hans Zimmerman. Nope. You ever heard of the oh, band? You know what? You know what's a good one? Hmm. Um, the guy who do, did the music, uh, what's his name? John something. Williams. John John something. Uh, he did uh, for Synecdoche, New York, and for Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. Hmm. The guy who made the music for those. Okay. Dope. What are some metal bands that you liked? Uh. So I remember going to Best Buy, and I picked out a Dying Fetus album. And as far as I know, my dad bought it for me. <laughs> and I remember going home and going to sleep <laughs> the to Dying, Dying Fetus, Fetus. <laughs> in my bed. Uh, but I also had Azalei Dying, you know. I mean, I, I really liked Static X. And, okay. You know, I liked, um, I, I really enjoyed music from Tony Hawk, so I kind of, mm -hmm. a lot of the music that I liked was like, you know, in video games that I kind of liked too. Um, you know, I, I really got into metal, uh, Bleeding Through, uh, right, which I, that was the band that would do those Boondock Saints uh, mm -hmm. scenes in their, in oh, their, okay. yeah. uh, I really liked uh, Through the Eyes of the Dead, you okay. know, I liked On Earth. Yeah. I loved breakdown bands. If you did a breakdown, I was like, you know what? It's a good band. Okay. You know, yeah. hold on though. Wait yeah. a minute. Have you heard this one? They're like, did not do it's all the space in between the playing. What do you mean? <laughs> I'm like, bro, but you didn't hear Pantera's song, Suicide Note Part Two. They do a breakdown in that one. I think they made them popular. Um But uh yeah, so I like music, you know. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, you know what I really liked a lot of a lot of music. You know, I like to say I was introduced to Bone Thugs and Harmony and U2 at the start. Yeah. Music from Soul Calibur and um, Super Mario. Um, the movie? No, the game. Super okay. Mario the game. That was probably where any of my like composition understanding Ooh. actually came through, Super Mario. Really? Yeah. Um, and then from there, like I remember listening, even when I was listening to like Asley Dying and stuff, I was listening to Chingy. I was listening to... You know, Lil Wayne, go DJ. That's my DJ. Go DJ. That's my DJ. See, I never got into rap. Never. Uh, you guys? Uh, very little bits here, like here and there. Like I keep, you know, finding like an artist. You know, somebody will show me. I'm like, and I really like this, but like I don't generally know enough. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you I know. liked a lot of Tupac, like early Tupac, like my sisters and stuff. I listened to a lot of oh, R and B okay. and like rap and stuff growing up. My first album uh, CD I ever bought was uh, uh, that group Tag Team. I did that. I, Whoop, there it is. I sold a whole bunch of candy oh at school my God. and bought that. That was one of my first C CD purchases was that. And then I've got a great wow. candy selling story from school as well. Okay. Yeah, I used to sell candy like it was oh, like yeah. drugs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Like, like under undercover. Well, or? Yeah. Well, like I would buy like these big movie theater packs of um, nerds. And then my dad would bring me, like, these little tiny envelopes, and I would weigh them out. And, like... That's awesome. And then I would sell them at school, like, these little packets, like, during recess. So I could buy a tag team and crisscross, you know? It's incredible. Yeah. Oh, right. my Enterprising. God. Yeah, yeah, it was definitely. Yeah, yeah. Help and I remember, like, for Christmas, like, like, my mom would go to, like, you know, Sam's Club, and I'd be like, oh, get me, like, this, like, 50-pack of, like, Warhead bubble gum. So I'm going to sell them off for 50 cents a piece at school. Make me some money. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I would, yeah. Bro, I knew the kid. There were I was kids like fourth who would, grade. Born hustler. Pheasant Ridge. <laughs> Pheasant Ridge, they'd come over with uh, Slim Jims. I'd be like, I'll sell you one right now for 50 cents. And then he'd come back a little later and he goes, Since you did me good on that deal, do you two for 75. <laughs> Those, and I was like, Damn, dude. Like, that's real stuff, though. People would go and sell eggs at the market. You know, people were actually more money conscious. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I got, when I was a kid, I was always trying to try to get some money. Yeah. Oh, you know, for sure. Like, you know. schemes almost, though, with me. Yeah, that or, like, you know, obviously, like, you know, you start off, like, doing chores and yeah. charge yeah. your dad. I don't for, know if you, you can know, tell. I just that. asked my dad for money, and he gave it to me. He did? Yeah. I would ask my dad for money. My dad worked third shift, and he, like, and he also, like, boxed for, like, tough man and stuff. So he was always, like, either training, working. Like, he was always sleeping a lot. So I would ask my dad when he was sleeping for money, and then I would wait a couple hours and ask him again. And he wouldn't even remember. So he give you money twice. Yeah, he give me money twice, and he'd be like, "Oh my god!" And he'd be like, "Did I give you like?" He's like, "Did I give you money?" And, I, and I'd be like, "Yeah." And he's like, "Did you come back down again?" And I'd be like, "No." 
And then, yeah, I just do that <laughs> weekly. Why do you just, even sell candy when you just go to dad? Because I need, I, just, I need a lot more money than just just the dad money. Uh, I Multiply. Got my- Money's yeah. all about multiple. Because I have like a friend too, so like we, I, you know, I want to like make sure like we had, we were both. Oh, you're both doing good. <laughs> both I remember covered. at 14 I started working, um, and I feel like if I would took half that money and put it away into something, I'd be rich. Fucking oh rich. yeah, totally. Like, yeah. What did you do with your money from, can- from candy sales? Uh, from candy sales, I bought uh, CD. I told, but... Yeah, I bought you know tag team, crisscross, and like that. Uh-huh. That one rapper Snow. Mm-hmm. He did that Informer song. I bought his yeah. CD. Um, uh, and then, uh, and then also, I would buy. I was really into like sports cards. Okay. So like, I bought a whole bunch of Juwan Howard rookie cards. Not Pokemon cards. Because that's the only basketball player I cared about was Juwan Howard, and that it went nowhere. I wish I <laughs> invested in Jordan or somebody better. I don't think he would. <laughs> yeah, maybe I don't know, but uh, but also, totally Juwan Howard is the head coach of Michigan in basketball now, okay. and if he does well, his card. Those might card be, might go. Might do. You some, still have them. I still. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah like, what are they worth damn. right now? I don't know. I remember. I remember one time. I remember one time I bought this card because I had like three three paper routes at one point too. God damn. Oh wow. Uh, yeah. That's yeah from, I had a paper that. route for like four years. My mom. That's where my mom started singing a lot. She would drive me in my route, wrap newspaper pa- papers for me, and she'd be newspaper. singing songs all the time. Yeah. <laughs> 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 no, she was singing like Gloria Estefan and John Sakata and like uh, Michael Bolton. But uh, yeah, I remember one time I had an ATM card. I was like 14 years old. I had an AT- I had my own bank account, an ATM card. I remember pulling out seventy five dollars, so I go to Sports Card Stadium on 28th Street and buy the seventy five dollar like diamond cut like hologram oh, yeah, Jawan yeah, Howard yeah. card for seventy five bucks. I'm I, I'm too scared to look it up. Do you see that he just had me open his? Uh, I saw that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he, he didn't, yeah. <laughs> I didn't want to interrupt your story, but uh, I want to make fun of him for a little bit. (laughs) I was kind of wondering what was going on over there, but I was like, I I was like, do you want me to drink this? Oh, no. Can you open this? But I will look up that card, and I'll get back to you and let you know. I do want to know how how it's uh, appreciated. uh, I hope it's at least. How many do you have? I only have uh, Juwan Howard cards. 747. Like, like, no, like like 50 or 60 maybe, you know, like a good handful. They didn't make that many, I think, of Juwan Howard. Juwan Howard wasn't like an all-star playing basketball but he did play in fab the league four. for like he was part fab fab five or fab five fab yeah. five i mean i guess if you don't want to count chris weber i mean for a while <laughs> for a while they were the fab four because yeah. they don't get along but they're all good now they're all okay. friends i love john howard he's a good man especially bumpkins john howard yeah uh, michigan candy. football michigan football yeah i was a huge michigan football fan really definitely yeah yeah my dad took me to uh notre dame once with his boss I was picking my nose and shit, eating my boogers. My dad goes, stop it. The boss is right here or something. <laughs> I was like, oh. Like, I've seen Michigan basketball play Michigan State, like, before Tom Izzo was the coach. And, like, Tom Izzo's been at Michigan State forever. forever. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You like, like Michigan State? You like how they run as a university? I don't, I'm not a fan of Michigan State, but, like, you know, that's okay. It's 50% like, of the people there aren't even from Michigan. I feel like that's why I like that at a lot of schools. Probably. Right? Yeah, because they're fucking Well, sellouts. I think other schools might not have people from Michigan either. Yeah. That was, that was <laughs> yeah. other state schools. Yeah, yeah was good. Good. Like around, Texas. I go around and meet people. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's yeah. like going to Korea like and having their Olympic team and going, oh, did you see that? They got a Jamaican person on the team. No, they're all Koreans. They're not going to have a single Jamaican person there. Right. I don't know. They, Maybe. Yeah, I, I don't. Or I don't know. Anyway, sports is good, though. You like I the mean, game? You ever been mo- to a Griffin game? So most of my friends who play music and, like, where I work at are not sports fans. Okay. You know, there needs to be more diversity in, in sports. I think, uh, sure, and everything. I used to be a professional <laughs> basketball player. You did not. Yeah. And then I blew my coach. Oh, and I can throw a ball, but I can't suck one? You gotta be kidding me. Anyway. Anyway is right. Anyway is right. All right. More diversity, like I was saying. Okay. Do you want to play a song? Uh, sure. Oh, is this about songwriting? Not songwriting. Do you, I mean, We're, yeah. You're, you're probably going to play a song. Do you want to play a song? You want to kick it off? No. No? I got more jokes. <laughs> and my dad, we had to throw, a, we had to build an escalator in the house. Why? My mom had a hard time walking up the stairs. My dad couldn't continuously help her up. After throwing her down every time. (laughs) 
so. Well, I mean, I know some people have like the things that like attached to, like the railing. Oh, it's like a chairlift. Kind yeah. Of. Yeah. Those are cool. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Good conversation. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> chairlift. Come on. You know, and they yeah. know they're in the house, and yet their fucking relatives are still knocking over and over again. Come on, come on. You know how relatives are with people who have disabilities. They're like, they don't give a shit. Winter actually is probably the environmental condition that uh, ensured that human beings would need each other. Um, or go down south. Sure, or yeah, or leave, or be seasonal be like more birds. transient. But yeah, I mean, you had people surrounded by the fire. You had one room in the house that had the fire. Before uh, heating and cooling came about, people were a lot more connected. Um, were a lot more. Even think about. I mean, this is dumb to bring up, but like even how lighting works today versus how it did back then. Yeah. Like it changed how we. I mean, we wouldn't be doing this right now, obviously, but we wouldn't be communicating after night. Right. We'd be like, all right, let's go to bed. Not. Nah. And you know what? Our bodies have adjusted to that rhythm over time. Like our bodies aren't the same. Yeah, our bodies aren't even the same temperature in the winter as they are even in the summer and spring because our bodies went for hundreds of thousands of years connected to the cycles of the planet. That's why the lady who wrote Virginia Woolf, she wrote a book called A Room of One's Own. Well, four four years later, she killed herself. You know why? Because man, to confine man is to... Uh, basically make them go mad. Wait, so to bring back this kind of conversation we had earlier, it's it's similar to like the fact that I'm 39 and playing video games my dad is not. Yeah. It's the same thing. Like, it is. It's that, no, oh, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, we, no, my we, dad was playing really Ghost nice. Recon. My dad used to play Ghost Recon. He'd be talking to fucking kids in the shit, sitting Indian style in front of the TV. I remember I was like 15, 16. My dad fucking loved games. Okay. I didn't even get to play them. <laughs> I mean, it's just different, right? Like, yeah, I mean, no, it different totally is. Yeah, but yeah, it, no, no like, you're right though. Like, yeah, yeah. like some people do, and that's what their thing is. But like, mine, my dad didn't. That that he wouldn't have time for that in his we mind. Ask it now. Good dad. <laughs> uh, we have our differences. We don't speak a lot. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense too. You probably had uh, your differences too, which. <laughs> But, you know, when you're that old, it's hard to judge anything that a man does at that age, which I've also realized, too. Because you go, he's so old. Uh, you go, oh, yeah. I'm judging my dad. He's 50 years old. The fuck yeah, it's I not fair. Way? Well, no, not even that, though. It's it's like when my when I'm 39. When he was 39, I'm sure I didn't like him that much. Yeah. Like, you know, but... Damn. But like, I hadn't thought about that really. <laughs> isn't that crazy though? Like, yeah. Like, I'm I mean, selfish... I'm starting to... I just turned 40 myself, and, like, I'm starting to have some of those realizations, like... Oh, yeah, like, if I was trying to tell some fucking 12-year-old kid right now what to do, like, I would have no fucking clue. Okay, so I taught for 10 years, and I had the patience of a saint. It was just, it, I, it wasn't the fact that I was on the clock. I just, like, I was like, ah, this kid is paying me, their parents are paying me. I yeah. can just, the kid can be a little dick, and I don't have a problem with it. The minute I was close to selling the business, I was like, you're a piece of shit. I can't deal with you. <laughs> I would, just be, oh, no, no, I can't be. I've noticed some certain open mic calls. It's more about them, yes, than that is about the open mic. And sure. for me, for me, it's like, like I don't want to play my open mic because I feel like me as a host, it's for people like you who come out to play, or if you ever want to bring a bass or whatever, and like you came out and yeah. played, like it's about that's your time. I'm not trying to take away stage time. Yeah, I think there's a happy medium. Right, like, like in in a way, you're there to make us all feel comfortable. You play, yeah. you pre- you present right. your stuff. But yes, if if you make it the Joe hour, then no, not stupid. And I've been there. I've seen people oh, yeah, make it their hour. Them. Yeah, you know, right. which is ridiculous. Because you're there, like, how, you don't you do this every week? Like, are you are gonna get sick of that? Well, it's kind of like I need to make sure the people who are at the bar right now feel like the performer is yeah. up to par. If we just let, you know, a situation come up here and somebody's not very confident, the audience members might start feeling uncomfortable. Who cares, though? And it's my job to suck their dicks. <laughs> and to make sure that they get out of here and nut and everything and feel good and, you know, get to go home and go to bed. And Some people are ego. And, you know, the, some places the public is in charge. And it's sad to see people who don't have any balls, you know, to, to go, hey, look, you know, this is my place. I'll do whatever the hell I want. I think the nice thing about my open mic at Fulton Street is that people listen. Yeah. You know, even, like, non-customers. Yeah. 
like not. What I thought liquors. was really cool. So like Mark and I checked it out. Um, and actually, we only checked it out because we went to Founders and they moved it to Tuesday. Because of oh, me. Yeah. <laughs> Damn straight. <laughs> no, but what was really interesting is like it was a um, slow moving crowd. And all of a sudden, what you saw is this close knit thing where like 10, 15 people were there. Mm-hmm. Kind of came all out of the shadows. Mm-hmm. I'm not calling them vampires. Yeah. But like it was just kind of cool how like as. You could tell it was community, I guess. That yeah. was the difference than I've seen at other places. When you guys first started playing, I actually sent him a snap. Because you guys did a Everclear song. Oh. Mm-hmm. And he loves Everclear. Yeah. And uh, and then he did his pumpkin song. And I, I couldn't stop talking about that. Because it was like a pumpkin song I mm-hmm. wouldn't even <laughs> expect it. Mm-hmm. It's awesome. But I think that's kind of the fun thing, though, too. And, and I think when I was doing the Petty covers, which I didn't need to do four of them, I get it at an open mic night. But, like, I, I was like, these songs mean something to me. Like, they're awesome songs in my brain. Other people like these songs, too. It's just, yeah. you, you kind of have to figure out why you're doing it. And for me, it just wasn't that much fun. Mm-hmm. And it should be. Like, it should always Maybe. I don't know. I think it. Uh, well, maybe not fun, but, like, you have, whatever you're trying to get out of it, like, you should be getting that every time. Like, I fun think, when you perform? To, like, your point. Well, yeah, like, about how it's not about the crowd or whatever. Yeah. Like, it doesn't happen to necessarily be fun if that's not what you're in it for. But I think that's the difference. But if you whatever you are in it for, you should you should be getting get that. that. Right. Yeah. And I don't think like where I'm at right now, and I have some stuff in my music journey that I'm working to fix. But I'm like, it's I too love bad it. Tom Petty wasn't there to critique me. Uh, well, no, to to play his own songs, you had to do it. Mm-hmm. I mean, I couldn't still. show my. Well, no, I, you, what I like about you is you have balls bigger. You probably have cancerous balls. Okay. Hmm. You probably do. They're so tumor ridden that they're huge. I'm not on life no, support but, yet. But to do what he did, I'm just like, dude. I think you're fucking funny. You just went out there and you fucking did it. Mm-hmm. And more people need to. And you did awesome. But more people need to just show their shit and suck. Yeah. And through that, sure. you get really fucking good. Yeah. I mean, I kind of ask a lot of people when, like, like they're definitely in bands, man. Like, I always kind of ask, like, do we have fun? Like, do you have fun? Because I think it's very important. Yeah. I think that probably trumps everything. So I, I play with a drummer right now, and the guitarist is in San Francisco. The guy who works for me, or works with me. We're going to cut that works for me. He, <laughs> he used to work He's for me. He used to He'll cut that out. But. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Somebody's got But if I say it enough, it's yeah, hard to cut. The that. guy who works for no, you. No, but like, uh, I, I love jamming with <laughs> all you assholes. <laughs> I love jamming with them more than anything else. Yeah. So open yeah. mic night for me is just fun, kind of different thing, and I'm helping Mark kind of with yeah. his music stuff more than more than mine. So I wonder if just... they have fun since they're working. I mean, they're gonna say they are. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody works anymore, and I made no in this new business. I made sure that I was not a boss anymore. Yeah. Wait a minute, anymore. you fired him already? To... <laughs> <laughs> he's pulling your kind of humor. That's why he's not here. Yeah. Okay. Because yeah, I had to let him go. I mean, he's gonna watch the podcast before he knows though. Uh, it's called Lorraine. Um, by who? By me. By Joe. By Joe. Yep. Uh, I wrote it about my uh, kind of my nephew inspired it. So, <clears throat> um, I was like living at my mom's house, my my mom, well, my dad's house. I gotta remember. He always says it was his house, but yeah, <laughs> my mom's house. I was living there, and uh, I was like in between places, or whatever, and. You know, I'm not really close to my family, so it was kind of a rare opportunity I got to spend time with my nephew. You know, it was like, at that time, he was probably seven, seven or so. I'm bad with numbers, so I don't know how old. He was, he was a little kid. One would argue time, but yeah. Yeah, and, uh, you know, well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but anyways, he, he was outside, and he was scared of this thunderstorm. And he, I was outside smoking cigarettes, and he wanted to come out and hang out with me, but he was, like, scared, so... You know, I kind of try to make him feel comfortable about it. And, you know, next thing you know, he's, like, splashing, play, having a blast. Like, not even caring about the storm. And it just made me think about, like, me being a kid and, like, how, like, like, like how that, like, I don't know. I feel like, I feel like being a kid was, like, the best time of my life. I had, like, I was, like, no f- scars from life. I didn't have to worry about money. You know what I mean? And, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I still feel, like, the same kid. Personally, to me, I still feel like the same kid that goes and plays like kickball and something like fourth, fifth grade. Like, yeah. and it kind of made me think that like I kind of lost that like that perspective for a minute. And if I looked at other people and like remember that they were children at one point, I think I would treat them better. 
Well, it kind of goes to our, our dad talk. Right. Like, all of a sudden, I'm 39. And again, I think half, he had four kids. Um, clearly close with my family. Um, think of the pressures that it puts on somebody. Mm-hmm. And how right. they, it would change you how you grow. <clears throat> yeah. Where I have none. I mm-hmm. had a dog for two weeks. Yeah. Yeah. Did he run away? I gave him away. So. My dad so sold my dog. Came home one day, he was just gone. Not only that, uh-huh. but remember how you used to treat people when you were in school? <laughs> you know, much money school? Is I think about this specifically with women. Wait, did you treat women good or bad? No, we're just talking about looking at time and perspective, yeah. and distance, how time and distance adds to perspective, but if you don't look, you don't see. Uh, when I was in school, I would treat diff- women differently. Because we were friends. Yeah. And you can't, you can't, now when you reach a certain age, you, f- you forget that you were friends with women. Because, well, you gotta see your crotch. You gotta see mine. <laughs> you gotta show each other our crotch. you're just so close. <laughs> so close. <laughs> 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 so close to just being like, uh-huh. Sincere. And it, and it was, it, it was sincere. It was. And then you're like, I gotta land the wand joke. Yeah. Yep. It was good timing, though. It was good. <laughs> but yeah, the song's about kind of like that, but it could mean anything. I always, like, for me personally, with songs, like, I want them to mean, to mean, not about that. <laughs> I mean, I guess if he wants to think about it that way. But, you, know, you know, I don't know. For, for me as an artist, I, I sometimes I feel like if I explain a song, maybe I'll take away yeah, sure. uh, what the other person right. relates to in that right. song from them. Yeah. Yeah. I'm glad I ruined your song. Yeah. I'm glad I'm an asshole. I mean, the, I might ruin it here too. You so. need to watch Charlie Rose interview. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, it's not an interview. We're discussing. Discussion. <laughs> well, yeah. This song, I'll let me play it. I'll, pl- I'll try to play okay, this. I, I want to interrupt you one more time. That's fine. I'll, I'll play this song. <laughs> okay. I don't see your face Took a number and waited in line Maybe I'll see you I don't know your name Love comes in all shapes and sizes Maybe I'll see you number and waited in line swear I'll love you all day That's 
can I ask questions about it or not? Will that ruin yeah, you can ask questions about it. Those open chords? Sure. Smashing Pumpkins? Uh, no, I don't actually. So, uh, for pumpkin songs, I only know, um, like tonight reprise, like the like the B side version of tonight tonight. Okay. Um, I've learned like, like bits of like, like you know songs, like you know like like an intro yeah. to a pumpkin song. But yeah, like and actually to tell you the truth, I don't even know what chords I'm playing. I love the tempo change. And oh, thank the, you. The yeah. switch in mood there at the end. Thank you. Yeah, I I, I honestly don't even know the chords. I'm it doesn't matter, though. No, no, it's just something I kind of came up with, and it's all trial and error. See, now here's the funny thing: you telling me the story about your nephew made it mean more to me. Yeah, but I, I know that doesn't work across the board. Sure, like you can ruin the mystery of a song, but for me, it made it more personal. And I do agree, the tempo change that feel. It had two lives, like it had two lives in one mm -hmm. song that kind of was good to create. Yeah. Also, I've heard that song, but because. I'm here listening to you actually play it. I didn't. I never heard the lyrics before. Yeah. Oh, uh, thank you for that tempo change thing. I've actually like, I went to like a studio one time before and like tried like you know hey I have this idea for this song and they want to like they'll be like keep it all in one tempo. Let's map this out. You know. Yeah, like, kind of like that. And like for me, it's like my songs are like like it's like living and breathing. Like yeah. they're imperfect. Yeah. Actually, that was the other thing about the song that's so good is the breathing. Uh, you're actually the the chords aren't really as uh, memorable as you are when you're singing them. Yeah. Mm. yeah your thank emotion. You. Yeah. Let me finish your words. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's hard to talk about a song after it happens. For sure, because it unless well, you, unless people know how to describe it yeah. accurately. And I didn't want it to be like a I present my song because that's how I feel after open mic night though too. I'm like oh, I'm naked now. Yeah. And I yeah. don't necessarily like being naked. I yeah. see my own body. It's not. I'm not a fan of it. Yeah, I think the guy who wrote for Dave Chappelle, he said, I looked in the mirror when I was in high school, and I said, you better start writing some jokes. <laughs> I think uh, for me, right, when I first started playing guitar, because previously I, I just sang in a band. Yeah. Um, and those songs, I mean, obviously I was, like, singing in that band, like, writing lyrics, but, like, they didn't feel as personal until I started playing this, like, yeah. and then writing the song all together, you know? Mm -hmm. Um so and I feel like that's when I it clicked for me, like just started writing for me, and just from like the heart. Isn't it interesting how you're writing about someone else though too? Right. Yeah, um, and also in a weird way, it's like when I sing a song, it's like I'm playing it for the first time every time. Hmm. I've never lost that emotion from it. See, that's what the great. They're like you got to play this note like it's the first time you've ever played the note. Yeah, and I I mean and maybe it's the uh, so I actually grew up in Iowa. I know you wondered. Um, like I, could, I, I already knew because oh, of your height. <laughs> I swear to God, Iowa people are just tall. Every person I've ever met from Iowa is like a giant. Yeah, well, so thank you. I'm giant. You know, we have the CGI squeeze me. How tall are you? Seven foot. Oh, okay. I'm six foot two. How tall are you? Uh, five eleven. I look down on you. <laughs> you're... Uh, I like six guy. foot. I think. Yeah, so. Five ten. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, we're all in ties. You're right footed. My dad got bigger. He used to be my size. Did you ask him if he was right footed? <laughs> yeah. Which Which one's your good foot? <laughs> <laughs> so I never heard that before. It go down. Well, like, yeah. Right no, I lost my whole fucking point. <laughs> but I feel like uh, yeah, musically, it's I think it's good to kind of like I don't know, not get bored with a song. I guess you know. Yeah. I've never had that happen yet. Like okay. when I'm going through the motions. You were saying that you have to practice a song a lot before you go perform it. Yes. Do you then get bored with practice? You practice it for three weeks. No, because I still feel the way that he feels. Like, I will like, you know, to some degree. Like I've probably never played the same song the same way twice. Exactly. You know, like I just need to know, like when I'm playing with other people, when we're you talk about that that tempo change and that mood shift like I want to make sure that I know to do that when he's going to do that yeah. and like for me I got to like it's not practice in the sense of like okay we got to get this like perfect down to every note I just want to like play with the other people enough times to where I will just feel that it's time to change yeah. it like not Adam's been a huge great like influence on me for like as far as writing and performing because I tend to be so like 
oh, I met you now. Let's go play a show in front of two hundred people or a hundred. You, awesome. you know what I mean? Like it is. And and exactly. it's, but like he's taught me to like really hone in on certain things and like make moments. Yeah. You know, like especially like that song. Like I think that's what you were calling out, though, is that moment in the song. Yeah. The tempo change creates a moment. Yeah, and I think mm-hmm. like in the, for him, like before I was playing music with him, I would just like expect like the people I'm playing with like to find that where like that's not easy. Yeah. You know, because like, if you're not getting people that just like listen, you know, constantly. So with Adam, he's really helped me like, kind of like structure me a little bit more instead of being so like reckless which is like really helped me as far as like playing but, but think of it and and i'll compliment you guys in both different ways and neither are a diss at the same time the rawness mm-hmm. that rawness creates that emotion yes. with that that education and i maybe i'm giving you more credit or less Way credit too much. Yeah. but well education's a word yeah um, fair but 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 coming maybe from a musical standpoint that you were from the word educe which means to douche is that what it means, right? To draw, oh. to draw for it. I was close. But I think my, I've kind of rubbed off with Adam a little bit and made him sometimes get a little bit <laughs> carefree. Do I don't know. Sometimes like, I think you're more alone. <laughs> like, yeah, no, I, it's not. Listen, it's for me, it's like I'm not good enough to do that. Like what he's talking about, to yeah. get on stage with like eight other people and be like, hey, we're going to play this song that I know you've heard it before. Like, yeah, but you your know, your attitude is I'm just going to stumble through this and sometimes it's going to be fucking great. And if I do that enough times, it's right. going to be great. Every and time. I don't have that confidence to me. I'm like, well, I would prefer to know at least what I'm going to try to do yeah. during right. this song. There's been a couple of songs we've written recently where like I've been like, Psh. It's ready to sell tomorrow. Yeah. Like, as, and it, but, it, but with Adam, like, hey, like, let's work on some. It's he's turned like good songs into like great songs nice. because of because of his attention to detail, I guess, or whatever you want to call. It. You know what I mean? Like, but I think it's also that back and forth. Yeah, it's, totally. It's that, that feedback mechanism to mm-hmm. people that you trust. Mm-hmm. So the guy that I Nick, who works with me, mm-hmm. not for me, um, and it actually mimics what we're doing here. You get the people drunk and they have stories. Yeah. So cool. I finished an event and I was like burnt out from doing the music thing. I didn't want to do it anymore. Um, the event was for the music studio at the time. And I was like, I want to write my own songs because I'm spending every fucking waking moment on this studio and it's not fulfilling me. And I'm like, I'm going to get a great bottle of whiskey. And we hung out and had whiskey and wrote songs that I would have never written if I wasn't lubricated. Yeah, sure. And I would have never, never wanted that feedback. Actually, a guy that you guys might know. Do you know Chris Spencer? He's quite the open mic night guy. Man. I'll show you a picture someday. Yeah. But anyway, so he came over to my house, and it's not a knock on him. I tell the same fucking story. He came to my house, and my melody singing, my singing was so bad. He goes, I can't, I can't help you write this song. There's no notes. There's no melody. I was like, well, fucking help me. Like, I'm asking you to help me. Yeah. Give me a direction. Yeah. You know, you're this good musician. Yeah, that's what I pay you for. Go over here. <laughs> I did not know. Different guy. Okay. Okay, but sorry. No, like, I was at the point with my songwriting where I needed somebody to, yeah. I needed a teacher. I needed somebody to yeah. bounce stuff off of. You remember and, that movie? Uh, was it Chris Wallace? Uh, uh, yeah. uh, Princess Bride. I mean, you sound like Chris Wallace right now. Oi, come over here and tell me about this. Uh, no, help me. Help me. Help me. I yeah, did, my voice would be sounding better if I wasn't Chris Wallace. Did that work? Did it? We hung out and had whiskey. We sucked the first couple no. times. But it, it was that back and forth. And I think that's so key. You hear me? I'm another sorry. person. You need to sing with another person. No. No, no, it is. You, it is. It is. It's like, what? I used to emulate uh, Dallas Green. Like, that was the first person I was listening to. I was like, oh, I want to sound like Dallas Green. Mm. Uh, and I tried to. I remember I was in the bathroom. I was trying to sound like Dallas yeah. Green. I was trying to hit those notes. Yeah. I couldn't hit those fucking notes. It, it, there's just so much... It's it's a writing partner. Chappelle didn't have a room, writing room of one person, right? I'm sure Chappelle came with great ideas and then had five other people that said, do this, do this. He was groomed for it. He was doing comedy at 14. Yeah. <clears throat> I, he steal from the greats. Always steal from the greats. Well, then get or me. not. Or not. Or you literally have it. Like, you know, remember there's that part. It's like, look, some people don't have it. You know, you gotta have it. You? You got it. You know, and or you don't. And they say that. You know, they say it's a thing. But I, but I don't think with music it's like... But people say this shit all the time, and I don't understand. Man, I wish I could play. Yeah. No, no, that's like, fucking... I've right. spent... S- like, you, you just do. Like, that's the thing. you like... Then you then do it. Like you can. 
Do you wish you could play? Right. Because I, if you really I did... I wish I could play easily. I wish it could be easy for me. That's really what they're saying, right? Yeah. I yeah. Wish this, yeah. yeah. I have spent, so the last nine months... And I, I think I'm... Sure well, when you have an album, like I've been telling people, just yeah. write one good song. All you yeah. gotta do is write one good one. It doesn't really matter. They're not gonna... Right. Everyone only knows Leonard Cohen, Hallelujah. Ah, no, they at least know another one that I can't name right now. Yeah, sure, <laughs> but you know, you know, he finished the album for, uh, for his record company, and they... They rejected the album. Paid him really. and rejected the album. Oh. He only became a singer because he thought it would sell his poetry. He was oh. a writer. Yeah, he was a yeah. writer. Okay. Which, if you listen to him sing, you can see Halle- right. Hallelujah had like 200 verses. He would just write verse after verse yeah. after verse. His last two albums, phenomenal. Well, probably the best fucking albums I've ever, you know. Yeah. I um, think singing for me helped me get over like being shy and, being, sure. you know. I had like a, I took like speech therapy for a long time. I had like speech impediment, and um, yeah, like you know, I struggled with that. I, like, you know, would mumble or talk low or a lot, whatever, because of that. I mean, like yeah, my mom was like, "Nope, you're gonna go all these speech therapy classes." I'm gonna fucking and then like singing kind of helped me kind of get over that. You know. So I I don't know if we can go around the room. Everyone probably here has. I had speech impediment classes. I got baseball cards, and I do think. Mm-hmm. How I choose to not enunciate my words is one of my biggest issues. With yeah, singing. I hear uh, whenever I get a, uh, a little buzzed. Sure, a little creep back in. You know? Really? Yeah. I feel like when I get a little buzz, it helps me just let it all go. Hmm. Yeah. Well, like Last you were saying, thing. like when you're writing, like on, you know, doing, I don't know, drinking or yeah. doing, you know, certain things, you know, can help. You know, and I think push-ups, for me, like doing push-ups, mm-hmm. push-ups, push-ups maybe or mushrooms or you know, right. you know other harder drugs or whatever you know i think i got trapped in some of that for a minute and easier then, drugs yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this drug is so easy to do yeah real easy drugs. and yeah, better that's... for you too like yeah. you can find one that's better for you it's like oh my gosh i didn't I'm realize they made jones soda and organic right <laughs> well, 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 well. <laughs> but but it's true because i think sometimes you yeah. can use them as a <laughs> what you're funny <laughs> You can use them as a mechanism to help you kind of like get a different space, but sometimes it becomes a crutch. Yeah. 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 Um, but yeah, sometimes uh, yeah, because sometimes it's hard to play, or you know, like. <laughs> well, and I had a drummer friend, first band that I was ever no, first band I was in here, um, who's like, well, everything under the sun has been written already, and that was just his attitude, and I'm like, I I don't disagree. So like every chord progression you can think of, every melody under that chord progression, it's all been done. Have you tried there to write? Everything under the sun, sure. Shadow of the sun. Yeah. <laughs> but now, I mean, like, I don't know. Like, I, I, I think that's true. I guess I hear that a lot. Of people like every chord percussion has been played or whatever. But like, you could still like break rules and change things yeah. up. Well, it, it doesn't even matter if it has. It, it's the same thing that you you were right. painting earlier. It's the same thing. It's like yeah. every picture has been painted. Everything yeah. has been done. That's fine. Mm-hmm. I can't. But I can't pay my rent by my pictures. Shit, just go try to be happy, damn. Save the paint. And your fucking destroyed ego, because ain't nobody gonna buy that shit. <laughs> like I said, <laughs> ain't nobody gonna buy that shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do you wanna make up a song for us? No. Here. Wait, there's a guitar right there. All right. <laughs> no, he no. said no, here. <laughs> yeah. 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 I like yeah, how you said that. <laughs> Wait, do we get to hear? Uh, we we quiz Joe like three different times. Do we get to hear what this is about or not? I'll take that as a no. <laughs> Good choice on uh, Jim. Really? Yeah. Come on, babe. Uh, Walmart agrees because that's the only one they have. <laughs> and I was like, I don't know if I have time to go to the liquor awesome. store. I do uh, a lot of Bombay at work. I see you're more of a fan of the gin than tonic. Yeah, I uh, I like I just usually shoot gin. Okay. And I drink a lot of things warm, like even some of my beer. Uh, wait, that's a German thing. And I, I like, like Milwaukee's best ice. I'm a Lutheran. Boy, you like big? Did you hear what he said though? Milwaukee's best ice, but warm. Yes. Nobody's getting the irony <laughs> is not lost on him. <laughs> Well, yeah, like even my roommates, I, when he buy, buy, buys beer, so I'll put half in the fridge and my half out. Um, Heineken's really good. Yeah. So, I can see that. Yeah. 
Yeah. But some some beers I like hold, like High Life. Yeah. You know High Life? Way it's crisp. I mean, it's from Brad. Yeah, it's from Russian beer. That's like go outside and work for a bit and then have a beer. Yeah. Hot summer day. Yeah. Sorry, we're talking over your plane. We're over Monday night even. Yeah. Right. Classic. So do you, do you have, are you? I'll play Leonard Cohen song. I can't leave my house or answer the phone. I'm going down again, but I'm not alone. Settling at last, accounts of the soul is for the trash that paid in full. I sit in my chair. I look at the street, the near return. My smile of defeat I move with the leaves I shine with the stone I'm almost alive I'm almost at home Cheers. Well, you mentioned Leonard Cohen. That's I, really like that song. I, I love that song. Now, I can't remember if that's an old one or if it's last The Goal. One. Oh, I didn't even finish it. Uh, and I'm almost alive at home. Almost at home. Hold on, hold on, hold on. That's a creepy fucking song. Wait, what? I don't remember the end. I didn't even. I didn't even do the end. I, I'm almost at home. He goes. What does he say? He goes. Uh, I said, "I'm gonna look at the neighbor. I'm almost at home. Uh, yeah. No one to follow. No one to. No one to follow and nothing to teach except. That the goal falls short of the reach. Yeah, that's it. The goal falls short of the reach. I really like the lyrics in that song. Yeah. Dude, I mean, if you want to be sad, his last two albums, he was dying. Yeah. And then his son was still helping him record. And then his son finished the last two after he passed. Oh. So there was a song that I always played for the students that sounded like Batman. And I'm just like, hey guys, you want to learn this song? I play it. It's I think it's called The Darkness. <laughs> I'm gonna listen to some more Leonard Cohen because I've never those really last two albums. Yeah. Like haunting, hauntingly fucking good. I'm assuming he passed away a long time ago. Five years. No, okay. he became president. He died the day Donald Trump became president. <laughs> Did he really? I'm gonna assume so. It's I entirely, can't. I don't it's have entirely any. possible. I can't dispute it. And I can't dispute it. I was. Uh, and you said five years ago. Maybe, maybe. But I remember maybe two years ago, just like pulling up his, what was his second to last album, and I was like, oh, there's a new one. Oh. And the new one was just phenomenal. Do you have an original that you're like?
side of the stings. You are in some sad state. Squeeze the best thing in the these insecure girls ever seen. You walk down the hallway and they stare all the way down. One day. You'll be everything I wish I could be. I hope you don't hurt me. That's the way they'll always be If you belong to me That was for my parents. For? That was for my parents. That was about my parents. Jesus Christ. Fucking Nobody ghost. saw that, don't worry. <laughs> Fucking ghosts, man. <laughs> Just met this guy down the street. He's like, I'm trying to counterfeit money. And he goes, every time I fucking try to get the goddamn thing on there, the ghost comes out. And I go, whoa, whoa. And he's like, hey, don't help. I'm being on ice and everything. <laughs> the hell are you talking about? You got to get that money counterfeited, motherfucker. What are you doing out here? <laughs> uh, yeah, my parents were kind of crazy and shit, you know. But they, they didn't do things very good, so... You know, I captured that. I've thought about them. I, I write all the time. I write, I've written my whole life. I've written every part of my life out because at the end of the day, some motherfuckers try to tell me who I was and I'm going to both have the only living record that I was that bad and that I wasn't because I haven't always been as horrible as some people seen me and um, people are just we're all growing it's unfair to have a static a fixed image of what other people saw me as and to think oh I gotta go against them because they you know well they saw you as a piece of shit and they're some of the only few people who ever did and so it's easy to kind of connect that guilt to them and to when you see each other you know you can never look at them in the eyes or um so, I'm just saying something about being alive, really, being a human being, is I had to witness some dumb shit. Do you see a correlation? I mean, I don't know how your relationship with your dad is, but you played bass. <laughs> but uh, the three of us have some uh, familial issues, and uh, quote Tom Petty again, he said the only... One of the best things, I was going to say this wrong, but to become a good songwriter, you have to have a bad relationship with your dad. Yeah. Well, the good you thing is, is that, yeah. I was just talking about this yesterday, the good thing about your dad is that he doesn't have to be biological. And, um, you know, there's part of understanding words is understanding their parts. Uh, you know, like uh, I was in the bar. I got I got this joke. I walk into a bar and I sit at the bar time, the table, and uh, a man walks into a bar. It's me, and I sit on the front and I look over to the lady next to me and I go, "I fucked my mom." And she goes, "Did you just say you fucked your mom?" And I go, 
Not my mom. I mean, mom assumes certain responsibilities. <laughs> I go, yeah, I got some issues with my parents. I had to get back at my dad. Why would he do? He's always fucking me. But that relationship was over a long time ago. I just sealed the deal. Parents, you know, what are you going to do? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, Parents, you know, how are you going <laughs> to... You know... Uh, well, how do you follow... How, what are you following yeah, up? Yeah, 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 Sorry. You know, I don't know. <laughs> I, would say, I would say the best advice my mom ever gave me was, was my relationship with, to my father. Yeah. You know, because I, I guess I carried a lot of hate or anger. You know, it was to um, try to let that go because that only consumes you and it's not consuming him. Yeah. Not you at know, all. Like, right. he, like he, I got, you know, it's like, I'm living rent free, you know, he's living rent free in my head, you know? Right. Um, right. And like, that was like a good, like, it was a good piece of advice because like, I, you know, I think eventually with anybody or partner or a friend or a parent, you know, sometimes you have to like, just let that go. Yeah. yeah. I feel like in my own life, it's hard to do something that when your parents ask you to do something that they themselves weren't willing to do, yeah. like let shit go like that, I'm like, but I don't have the tools. Like, yeah. and, and I, I, I've struggled with that a lot. I'm like, I don't know how to let go. Yeah. Like, I'm still mad about stuff that he said earlier. It's still legitimate. Yeah. Um, and, but, and, but, but you have to let it go for them. I still have to yeah. see my dad every day. and pret- Not every day. I rarely ever I was gonna see him. going to say, is that major in his job with him? No. And I tell him I choose to let go of my frustrations for you. And I said this recently, but they're not irrelevant and yeah. the feelings were a matter of my sensitivity to recognizing something was wrong yeah. Yeah. yeah and i was getting upset because i didn't know how to explain it well now i do know how to explain it and i found that even being able to explain it doesn't convince the other person that it's yeah. fucking legitimate yeah. my relationship with my family and they've like especially my father he i learned a lot i mean he he taught me what not to be you know yeah. I, i'm the exact opposite of that man, and I think it's oh, yeah, how, they beat the devil I, out of you. I, I think it's oh, yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, they uh, there's a lot going on. I'll tell you that. Uh, yeah, I used to say that about my mom, she would piss off the devil, I mean, uh, he just wouldn't stand her. Get out my dad's of super religious, like, like he's Superman, but well, yeah, like to the point where he told me he didn't have to love me because I'm going to hell hmm. and he's going to heaven. So Jesus didn't have it, doesn't, dad. it doesn't well, matter. Jesus' dad left him. Uh, well, Jesus right is start. his own dad, if you think about it. Um, yeah, yeah, totally. But but also, like, to think about somebody who's going to use religion that way, to be like, well, I don't have to love you because, you know, you're going to hell. It's, right. Well, you would want them to go to heaven with you if you believed in well, that. Yeah, his, yeah, it's, oh, that's him. But, uh, I mean, you you're going gonna to end up with a bunch of um, saints all searching for a father. Well, it's also it's also the thing, too, like, you know, recently, you know, he, you know, he asked me, he dropped off some mail, and he was like, uh, you're going to get the vaccine. And I was like, yeah, I think so. You know, I work in the public. Yeah. Well, like, I think it's probably smart, you know, like to get it. And he was like, well, I'm not going to get that. Jesus will protect me. And I was like, well, that's cool. You have that. But he got it. Yeah. You know, yeah. so I don't know. Yeah. Where, where Jesus was at that point. Like, was he busy? Well, Jesus was, yeah, doing something else. Probably, yeah, maybe. But, yeah, but, like, luckily, <laughs> you know, he did okay. Like, I don't, you know, I'm whatever. Yeah. yeah, you know. Well, it's the tough. Oh thing. no, I get that. I'm st- I'm I'm still on that train. Should I tried to go into Walgreens the other day and get a vaccine? They go, your booster, and I go, no, my first one. Yeah. <laughs> well, and I go, whoa, 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 and I go, no, I didn't get the fucking flu vaccine for I don't know how long. I just forget about this shit. I don't care how. Popular Were you asking it is. for the 2012 flu vaccine? Hmm. I just don't. You know, Have I you don't. I vaccine? don't follow I don't fucking trends, bro. My mom always wanted me to try to get it she was always like sick yeah. or whatever so she was like you gotta get the vaccines you know yeah. my like, landlord, pre-covid like yeah. i mean i hear that my landlord I, was I 83 they, years old I believe it but i just I feel like for well i say young people but we're all aging for older right. people yeah i feel no like, no yeah. my landlord 83 years old woman yeah doesn't want me to have it won't get it herself yeah never got it never wore a mask did on you, public and shit and i see her she would refuse for, to fuck did you not say you pay for rent with sex Hell no, no. Her husband died a long time ago. His ghost haunts us both and fucks us equally. I don't have to have sex with her. Anyway, uh, uh, <laughs> no, she won't get the goddamn vaccine. I tell this story all the time. I go, man, my 83 year old landlord, she just won't get the vaccine. She doesn't believe in it. She's out here walking around without a mask. She says she refuses. She says she doesn't believe it. 
She's gonna comes from nature. It won't kill me, and if it does, it's my time. If nature's trying to kill me, then let me die. There's that Mark Wahlberg movie where the trees are trying to kill everybody. Yes, right. The, which did really well for him. If it's if it's <laughs> really nature, it wasn't. It wasn't. They can't. I just they watched can't, that movie. They can't. Did you actually watch the happening? Troy, my roommate Troy, who plays drums Fucking in my band, actually watched that like motherfuckers. three weeks ago. <laughs> the happening. Talk the about happening. The truth of that. Yeah, we watched the happening. Nobody watched that. It wasn't happening. Yeah, no. It no, was no. uh it was a movie. The uh the scene that always happening. comes up, I've never actually seen it. Um the scene that comes up is when he yells at the old lady. And it's very out of context. Like he's like, What do you mean? So the scene I always remember is like that guy laying in front of that lawnmower. Mm. And it runs him over. Because mm. it makes everyone suicidal. Oh, okay. Because yeah. the trees are Because of the trees. Okay. Take it back to the land. Good for them, I yeah. say. You know? Yeah, I mean, that's the thing with trees is, you know, my landlord lived in this area. She always used to run around these woods, this area. Used right around to, here? Oh, no, over down by fucking, um, well, a little further from near Jenison, but a little further out. Anyway, I was going to pretend to be the guy who tore those woods down <laughs> earlier, but anyway, some eventually <laughs> some man comes in and says, look, we need to tear these woods down. We're building some, some new dwellings here. Why is that? Why? How come? Why do you have to build these ones? Well, for one, I don't need these kids running around here like a couple of bums and hippies hanging around trees and shit. And two, because there's a new children's TV show in around seven, four or five, four or five, six or seven, actually. You can keep them in front of the TV all year now. And uh, they don't need to be outside anymore. So, you know, then all the kids who were born in this area, they don't got any fucking woods to play in anymore. You never ask the kids. What they like to do around here, you just came in and start building houses, you fucking cock-sucking asshole. Like to fucking put a dildo on, rape that guy right in his fucking mouth. <laughs> tearing a, those a, woods down. The minute you put a dildo on, it's a strap-on. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. get it right. uh, I just On that note, <laughs> I think we call it a great night. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like, we talked for like two and a half hours. That's pretty good. Awesome. One for the trees. One for the trees. Yeah, yeah. This is I one mean, for the trees? And the kids, for God's sake. Oh, fuck the kids. One for the truth. You know, hey, it's a class of people. They used to go to co- they used to go to college at fourteen years old. They Thank you go- for having us. Thank you. Yeah, for this is awesome. Yeah, this is 